Our sensations, behaviors, learning, and memory are all functions of the brain and nervous system. These brain activities are carried out by a complex system of billions of specialized cells called neurons. Brain information is transmitted along circuits of interconnected neurons. Electrical signals move between neurons along cellular processes called axons, shown in green. Neuronal circuits are built during fetal life. The tips of growing axons, called growth cones in red, navigate through developing tissues to their synaptic targets. This movie tells the story of the neuronal growth cone, the navigator of developing axons. The Spanish neuroscientist Santiago Ramón y Cajal was the first person to see growth cones in fixed tissues. However, he imagined the vitality of growth cone movements in living embryos. Growth cones protrude finger-like phyllopodia and flatten lamellopodia that extend and search their surroundings for clues that mark the path to their targets. A growth cone's trip to its target is like a road trip. The growth cone must move through developing tissues and detect the roadways, signs, and exit ramps that lead to its destination. First, let's examine how an axon grows. Axon growth involves two fibrous components of the cell cytoskeleton, microtubules in green and actin filaments in red. Microtubules are long polymers of tubulin protein subunits. Microtubules support and define neuronal shape, encircling the cell body and extending along all neurites. In order for an axon to grow, microtubules in green must be constantly assembled and move down the elongating axon. Microtubules and axons continue to add tubulin subunits in yellow as an axon grows. At the growth cone, the microtubule bundle in green spreads out and single microtubule ends penetrate a network of actin filaments in red, which are polymers of actin protein subunits. Microtubules and actin filaments are dynamic polymers. Their ends grow and shrink by adding and losing subunits. Actin filaments disassemble completely, but microtubule ends may shrink a bit and then regrow. There is a third important component of the growth cone cytoskeleton, in addition to microtubules in green and actin filaments in blue. The motor protein myosin in red lies within the actin filament network. Myosin motors bind actin filaments and exert tensions to slide actin filaments, rearranging growth cone components or pulling the growth cone forward. Thus, the dynamic motility of a growth cone involves actin filament assembly and disassembly, the bundling and linking of actin filaments, the advance of microtubules, and forces generated by myosin motors. In addition to these cytoskeletal dynamics, a growth cone must adhere to its substrate in order to advance. In the left image, adhesion sites are black, while on the right image, corresponding actin filament bundles are white. Microtubules green at the growth cone front do not advance beyond the adhesion sites in red that are made by the extending growth cone margin in blue. This coincidence of microtubule ends, actin filament bundles, and substrate adhesions reveals a key component of the mechanism by which growth cones advance. Adhesion sites provide anchorage for myosin motors to pull actin filaments, AF, and align advancing microtubules in green, and other building blocks for axonal assembly. By aligning the advance of microtubules and associated components, the locations of growth cone adhesions determine the path of growth cone migration. This video shows microtubules in green advancing along bundles of actin filaments in red at the inherent front edge of a growth cone. 
Actin assembly at the front advances the leading edge, followed by adhesions to anchor the leading edge, and then microtubules advance towards the adhesive sites. Remember, the road trip analogy states that migrating growth cones detect the pathways, direction signs, and exit ramps that allow navigation to their synaptic targets. In this developing chicken leg, incoming axons, seen as thin black lines, take a common path to exit ramps, in, which are arrows, that lead to their specific targets. Growth cones must detect the extracellular guidance cues that mark these pathways. Proteins embedded in the plasma membrane are receptors for these guidance molecules. When the receptors detect their specific guidance molecule, a signal is transmitted in the growth cone to regulate the cytoskeleton. Adhesion molecules pave the pathways that growth cones follow, while surfaces coated with repulsive molecules disrupt growth cone adhesion and are guardrails that channel growth cones along the proper pathway. The top low mag view shows axonal growth that follows a pattern surface of the adhesive molecule laminin. The middle view shows neurons clustered on a patch of laminin, while the lower view shows axons tracking along a laminin path. In this video, phyllopodial antennae press forward from a growth cone to detect a laminin coated surface. The growth cone turns and accelerates to reach its preferred pathway. In this picture, a growth cone hesitates at a border with a surface coated by a repulsive molecule. Phyllopodia, in red, tests the surface, but the axon green turns to remain on its preferred pathway. This video shows a growth cone turning at such a guardrail to remain on the preferred pathway. In addition to surface-bound molecules that mark pathways, Gradients of soluble, attractive, and repellent molecules tell growth cones what directions to move along the adhesive pathways. These gradients of attractive or repellent guidance molecules trigger intracellular gradients of signals that either favor cytoskeletal advance for attractants or cytoskeletal retreat or repellents. In this video, a growth cone turns towards a glass pipette that releases a soluble attractant. The growth cone spreads robustly towards the pipette. Again, a growth cone turns towards a gradient of a soluble attractant. Actin filaments are preferentially formed towards the source of the attractant. This local actin assembly creates a high actin filament density in the growth cone region that is closer to the source of the attractant. Cool colors, blue and green, indicate low actin density, while hot colors, red and orange, mean high actin density. In this video, a growth cone reaches out to touch a bead that bears an attractant molecule. Microtubules and other axonal components rapidly shift towards the contact with the bead. Conversely, in this video, a growth cone rapidly turns away from its contact with a bead that's coated with a repellent molecule. When a repellent is added to the median that bathes responsive neurons, as in the right panel, actin filaments and growth cones are disassembled and disrupted compared to the left. Thus, positive and negative guidance molecules work in opposite ways to keep navigating growth cones on the proper pathways to their synaptic targets. In conclusion, the motility of axonal growth cones is a fascinating aspect of neuronal development that is crucial to normal behaviors and is necessary to repair injured or diseased neural circuits.